there's a yeah. famous quote from Steven Weinberg. Uh, he said years ago, the more the universe seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. What do you okay. think? I'll least leave that one I, 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 I uh, very strongly disagree with that pessimistic spirit. You know, I, I think that um, if we've learned anything in, by studying the cosmos, it's, it's that uh, it's not, our, we shouldn't be looking, it's not that our universe gives meaning to us. We give meaning to our universe. Now, raise your hand if you think galaxies are beautiful. Okay, why are they beautiful? They're beautiful because some people with telescopes looked at them and took pictures and the people who are conscious perceive them and behold them. That's what gives them their beauty. If there wasn't any conscious being in our universe at all with telescopes, these galaxies would not be beautiful. They would just be a giant waste of space <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So I, I think it's completely silly for people to get an inferiority complex just because we ha weigh less than a galaxy or take up fewer cubic feet than a galaxy and say, oh, we're so small. You know, it's the, it's the fact that your brains are the most remarkably, hmm. beautifully complex structures in the, our universe. That there, that the fact that your brains can be conscious of all this magnificent beauty out there, that it's the whole point of the whole thing. So Marcelo, that's where the I meaning comes from. I, I agree 100%, but I think what Weinberg was really talking about was that uh, he just meant that the more we understand the universe, the less purpose there is that seems to be in the universe. So there is no grand designer behind the scenes. The universe just happens to evolve in different ways and, and there is just a bunch of accidents to create eventually us. You know, I think that's what he meant. By it. So the point, I'm interpreting his words, the point is, is that there was no point, right? There is no, like, we're here just because it so happens that in this little planet the conditions were such for life to evolve, right? And there was a whole big history about that. And what is really remarkable is that the transitions that life had to go through from, first of all, the jump from no life to life, right? From non-living chemistry to living chemistry. It's like a, mm -hmm. a huge mystery and it's a remarkable, now a scientific question as well. Right. There are lots of people trying to figure that out. How on earth do you get atoms, right? To combine into molecules and somehow this group of molecules begin to behave as a living organism in the sense that it can feed from the environment, it can mostly reproduce. So this jump from non-living to living is, is amazing. But then that's just the beginning of the story, right? Because right? then you go to unicellular with a nucleus with the DNA protected, right? So then it becomes a little more complex unicellular. Then you go to multicellular organisms. And each one of these jumps in the history of life is tremendously complex and improbable. So right. what does that mean for you in terms of... Uh, well, we're getting there. Yeah. Well, I mean, to, to cite... <laughs> I was the, going to tell the whole story. Well, I, I'm going to speed you up a little bit here to, to cite the, um, the, the subtitle of your book, I mean, The Search right. for Meaning. So, I mean, what does this have to do with our... We as humans who are, you know, in the grand scheme of things would seem to be a rather insignificant speck in the cosmos, but d does this help in, in the search for meaning, d Absolutely. knowing this? Absolutely. This is just what you said, you know, it's because... We are this remarkable molecular machine that has self-awareness, right? And that's just unbelievable. So, you know, we always talk about the Copernicanism in science, which basically means that the more we learn about the universe, the, more, the less important we become, right? The idea that first mm -hmm. we're the center of everything, and then the sun became the center, but then there was one galaxy, but then there were many galaxies, and the universe is expanding. And now we're not even made of the mo most important thing. I mean, it's one indignation after another, right? So it's like, <laughs> what, what is the point of all this? It's like, this, you know, it's very depressing. However, well, when you not. look at it, no, no, that's how most people think of this. And there is this whole, there is a lot of anguish about this that says that we are really worth nothing, you know? And the point is precisely the opposite, you know? That uh, because we are these molecular machines capable of self-awareness, of capable of thinking, we have a very fundamental role in the universe, which is to create meaning to it, right? And so I actually call this human centrism, you know, the idea that we humans are actually, in a metaphorical sense, obviously, the center of the universe right now, because as far as we know, even if there are other intelligences out there, they are so far removed that we are it. And because we are mm -hmm. it, everything that we do has tremendous meaning to our existence, you know. 
And as Neil deGrasse Tyson likes to say, you know, you have to shake people around the streets, you know, to tell them that you're made of stardust that can think, right? And so that, to me, is truly remarkable. And that's where you begin to find meaning.